Well, the, there, there is a, a development in my town that Chapel monitored and found a few minor defects in it, and the Inspector General got a hold of it and said there was outright, just about outright fraud on it, that, that there were uh, invoices from another project were being folded into it. What I've heard is, while they're working on a 40B project, they may have another development going on, and they'll ask that contractor to take the cost from another development and put it on the 40B. So it looks as though it, it cost you $60,000 to frame the building when it really only cost you 30. You know, someone will work to assemble a piece of land using uh, 40B to get uh, a project permitted and then simply will sell the project and you'll see a series of, of flips occur driving up the cost of of that land. The units were just being sold off at the wrong price to holders of the corporation and they found several million dollars after Chapa had pretty much said there were some minor violations to it. So they're not then they're not an auditing agency and they were auditing and, and they basically ha have dropped the ball on it. Chapa announced a year ago they're no longer doing audits so I don't even know who's doing audits. I don't know who's going to do the audit for North Point. I don't even know if they got an audit. I don't even know if it's a real audit. I know this much. I've never seen an audit. The project's been there for four years. Don't worry, Joe. Our numbers are straight. We're limiting our profit to the 20% just in accordance with the law. I don't want to hear Chapa's numbers. I don't want to hear any private source. I want to hear the government. I want to hear Mass Housing's report every year on 40B profit levels. If you feel strongly about something, you have no right to sit back and criticize the process unless you participate in it and stand up for it. I should be able to participate in a process that might change that scope of this neighborhood for me. I'm just concerned about the developer's financial stability with the amount of foreclosures that are um, on the books right now and the instruments of taking for properties of non-payment of taxes in Easton, how this project would even be able to secure financing. So when my neighbor gets up and asks a question, and it's not a question that the developer wants to hear, this particular neighbor was threatened by a developer. And when I saw that, I stood up for him, and that particular incident made the papers. I was really surprised at some of the comments that I heard from people that thought that we were intimidating the developers. I've been looking at an empty lot that used to have goats and a lady that lived in a house, and now I'm going to have 28 neighbors with 56 cars pulling out of a driveway in front of my driveway, and it has me concerned. I think the density is what everybody in this room is bothered by, the density. It's just too much. If a house lot sells for $250,000, and then we want to build a 1,000-square-foot house or a 700-square-foot house on top of that, and it's going to cost us $150,000 to build it, we're now in it for $400,000, we get a tough time selling them in the $240,000, $270,000 range. In order for us to do that with $150,000 housing cost, we've got to get our land cost down to around ten dollars or $15,000, $20,000 a unit in the raw, and maybe $30,000, $40,000 finished unit. Density is what does that. This is much contrary to the density that we have ever accepted in the past. If you're increasing population, the land doesn't get any bigger, you're going to have to increase density. As America urbanizes, and it may seem like a funny thing to hear for people to hear, but America is urbanizing. America is moving to the coasts, America is moving to the cities. The world is urbanizing. This is a change in how human beings live. If the program worked, people wouldn't mind them building there. But when they build and sell the homes, which is what you would hope they would do, they only count a quarter of them. And, and so they added tremendously to the, to the housing stock of the town that they take the 10% of. But when they build these, th there's only a very slight increase in the percentage 
reaching for it's the 10 percent. But you're still increasing the overall housing stock in that community and driving up the median price. So in an overall uh, picture, it's almost as if a dog chasing its tail, that a town will have trouble um, catching up to the 10 percent figure on one hand, and you'll also see the number of units increase at a, uh, at a high rate, which ups the average uh, cost in that particular town. If a 40B developer from out of, out of our community can come in and say, Farmer Jones, you're zoned for single family housing, but we'll give you five times as much because we can put 10 or 20 units on that piece of land. What does that do? It raises the overall cost of land to every single family developer, making the cost of new single family housings, uh, housing opportunities prohibitively expensive. It's a tremendous disincentive to buy a 40B it, the, on both ends. If you think about it, that if you're buying a home and you're paying a portion of the rent of the person who lives next door because they've got to reach to a certain profit level, and if they're selling this one much cheaper than the one you're buying, you're obviously paying more than you should for it. And so yours is going to, you're going to lose money, and the person over here has to sign a deed restriction. They're not going to make money if the market goes up the deed restrictions of making sure that you will not reach the American dream of buying your home, selling it, and getting into a better one. There's got to be some happy medium to working with the community to put something in. You know, in the Shovel Shop project, that is one of the five most endangered historical landmarks in the state of Massachusetts. It's really a jewel that everybody should be looking at as far as a redevelopment of that property. Look, I don't blame communities for wanting to be deeply and actively involved in, in planning for this stuff. They don't want this rammed down their throat. And I think if the developers were smart, they should be happy to reassure people and tell them, we're going to do things that are going to make this the best part of Easton. You're going to be proud to be living down the street from this. They could really be superstars for putting in a project that, that really made this town um, a landmark of the best use of 40B. You cannot you know, can't get it at the point of a gun. This has got to be a collaborative process. You've got to plan together. You've got to work together. And the state has got to put, put up some bucks. If the state truly wants to do affordable housing, the state needs to, to, to get into the affordable housing business um, and come up with a system to do that. 40B works when uh, it's a compromise and everyone sits at a table and works out the details. 40B does not work uh, when something that doesn't belong gets shoved down a community's throat. I think NIMBY is, is a real uh, lazy term to put on somebody. I would like to consider myself to be someone that's educated, that's going to be open-minded. I'm not an opponent to any of these projects, but I still want to have my questions answered and I want to know what the projects are. At the end of the process, when everything is out on the table, then I can make a, an educated decision as to whether I want it in my backyard or not. People had no awareness on this until there was a proposal for, you know, a structure that was going to go up in their backyard, block their light, create traffic problems, put demand on their, you know, water supply. Uh, but I think it's become so prevalent now that I think you are seeing some commonality in people banding together and realizing it could happen down the street from them. Um, it doesn't have to be not in my backyard. It, it could be um, I want to see what's in my backyard. Well, I have a program that's 40 years old and hasn't worked for 40 years. I, 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 that would tell me it doesn't work. If you have an automobile and you've been trying to start it for 40 years and it won't start, it's probably not going to start. I have nothing against skilled developers or consultants they are only responding to the laws of the people. When the people of Massachusetts decide that they want to control their destiny again, that they believe in private property rights, they'll overturn the law and come up with better ideas. That's what our freedom is all about. But what happens if the crowbar doesn't exist? Because without 40B, and there are plenty of states that don't have inclusionary zoning, none of the affordable housing winds up in those communities. There are, there are Positives and negatives to both sides of this argument, but the bottom line is the law is there to provide affordable housing. It can be done if it is done correctly. If it's done incorrectly, you end up doing documentaries. I should be able to participate in a process that might change that scope of this neighborhood for me. Why 
why can't I build for my own kids that they've grown up in this town? Yet he can go down there and build 28 units. It is.